you also had a, a, a podcast on uh, kind of the, the Bolshevik takeover uh, of Russia. And this is kind of a, a subject that's that's close to me regionally and in terms of my family, because um, uh, we have a lot of stories about this, this event uh, in my family. Um, my grandparents on my mother's side were uh, both in Moldova when the Soviets um, came in and they were kind of telling Soviets, trading stories about the Soviets and the Nazis and who treated them better. And um, surprisingly, it was the Nazis. The Nazis were very... Not that surprising. <laughs> very mild in comparison to the Bolsheviks. And I mean, this is just probably one of the, the more horrendous pieces of family lore. Um, but my my grandmother was, um, was from a family with a, a lot of sisters and she was the eldest sister. Uh, and when the Soviets came in, they they heard, you know, a few days before that they were, you know, going to come in and they dug some form. Essentially, they they dug a, a, a rape bunker uh, under the, an area that they wouldn't discover. Uh, but one of the girls and I, I don't remember if it was one of my my um, grandmother's sisters or, so, or one of the neighbors. I mean, this is, you know, my grandmother died a long time ago. Can't can't fact check. Uh, but you know they were hearing her get raped by the soldiers, but they didn't want to make a they wouldn't want to make a sound because they were all hiding and under. Uh, and they said they they killed all of their uh, livestock. Um, they didn't take it for food. They just massacred everything in their in their wake, and uh, they didn't burn down the villages. But they were just completely just you know. And they said they they had no problems with uh, with the German soldiers, but the Soviets were just you know almost like a. Um, the Mongol hordes when they when they came through, so yeah, I don't know <laughs> what to say. That's just like one one piece of family lore that's that's happened to to someone close to me. But yeah, there's there's yeah. millions of stories like that. Yeah, you know that one of the things I said in that series or in that podcast episode was that you know whether or not one was worse than the other, like I, I, there's. It's not a conversation you can have like in our society. And so I, I don't have it with people. It's not worth having, you know, but like, uh, um, I can tell you which one scares me more. And for sure the Bolshevik regime scares me more for the simple reason that, uh, you know, that I, re- I recognize the Nazis basically, you know, Hitler is basically a warlord with badass panzer tanks and a very well organized technological military machine. Um, you know, I think him and Genghis Khan would have recognized each other or something like that, right? Um, the the Soviet the Soviet regime, um, and especially up until you know fifty six destalinization. Um, I don't think the world's ever seen anything like that. I don't think the world had seen anything like what was going on there. Um, I, I mean, it's it was an eruption of what we used to call Satanism world. Uh, the scary thing about the Nazis is like what they might do in order to get control of you. The scary thing about the Soviets is what they were going to do once they got control of you. And, um, you know, that's a frightening thing. I mean, t- throughout the entire like period of the 1930s, um, and again, the, the Nazis conducted themselves in the East uh, quite barbarically in terms of like the way they conducted the war. I don't defend, I don't defend the way that they... Uh, you know, the, 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 their reprisal tactics and things were were something that, uh, you know, um, other other European countries had uh, to a large extent moved past. Although that's um, exaggerated to a large degree when you get into what you know Churchill was doing and stuff <laughs> during the Second World War. But, um, but not to defend that. Uh, but still, like you go from 1933 when they took over up to 1939 when the war broke out, and the Nazi regime had executed about 10,000 people. And a lot of those people were communists who threw a bomb and, and actual people who needed to be executed. Um, a good number of those people were, they were, or they were subversive, caught spying for the Soviet Union, for example, about 10,000 people in six years. Um, you know, the Soviet Union was killing 10,000 people a day sometimes. It, it's just, it's unbelievable. And um, yeah, it's 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 just hard to fathom. It really is. It's like it's the one, it's the one thing that just is still completely. Like I, I went through. I, I've read books about like a lot. I got on an Aztec kick for a while. I've read a lot of books about Mesoamericans and the Aztecs, and on some level, I feel like I understand what they were about. And when I look at the Soviet regime, again, the the, the up to the, up through, especially the early period, you know, when they were, uh, you know, tearing down churches or turning them into brothels and porn theaters and and doing things like that. I mean, this is just a um an eruption of evil into the world in my eyes. 
And uh, again, like I always try to make it a rule to to tell myself that if that's how I see something, then it's probably because there's something I'm there's just a piece of the puzzle that I don't quite have yet. But I cer- I certainly don't have it because you know, I have no tolerance for it. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is kind of the 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 core of of what also my family observed was that they took you know the, the most toxic elements of society and took their resentment and turned that into a force, uh, and that force was big enough to to tear down everything, and it was big enough to act locally because you don't need, even need a centralized you know you don't need to direct the the village alcoholic or slacker or maybe mentally ill person who's already violent to to start murdering people. You just need to say go, and they do. Mm-hmm. And they and that's and that's what they did. Um, and you know, resentment is a is a very very powerful force. And, and like you said, it's it's pretty much demonic. I mean, if you if you were to just imagine the devil in in, in one feeling, in one just in one urge, it would be that that resentment turned to to revenge against against creation itself. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's what communism does best. You know, that's that's the you know that's a crystallized resentment right there. 